Moi guys, Jaser here. In this video I'll teach you my favorite Rocket League mechanics that I use for freestyling and comp clip hitting. In this video I'll talk about flicks, freestyle mechanics and pinches. You can see all the timestamps in the description or on the timeline so you can just go and search for any specific mechanic you really need. I'll go through how everything is done step by step and then give some tips how to make them more consistently in game. And yeah, I'm using Backus mod for training because when I'm just in free play I can just tap up and the ball teleports on top of my car. I can have the ball speed plugin for like knowing the speed of the ball of course and then just customizing the car however I want. And on screen you will also see my controller so you can understand better whatever I'm pressing and how to do the mechanics. For my controls I use default except the L1 or LB is arrow left and RB or R1 is boost. But yeah I have to start with the Jason flick of course because well it's my flick right? <laughs> And I know a lot of people have problems with this because it's very, very tough to get. I, I need to be honest with you. The perfect power you can get with this, like the speed and height, is absolutely insane. But at the same time, it's absolutely difficult to do consistently. The basic of the flick, how it's done, is very, very simple. It is kind of like a reverse speed flip. But yeah, let's just break it into parts. Yeah, it's, it's way easier when I explain it, like, you know, step by step. So first, you need to do backflips. So just make sure that you can do a backflip flick, that you will actually, like, flick the ball. Next, you will cancel the backflip forward, which will tilt your car in this, like, upright position. And yeah, just keep practicing that you can, again, just hit it up with it. And then lastly, you just have arrow left or right help down the whole time. Again, for me, it's uh, arrow left in L1 or LB. And yeah, it's a, like a reverse speed flip. It looks kind of funny, but when you have the ball on top of you, balance properly, you can get these like two really fast hits and flick the ball really, really high and with a lot of power. Now, some in-game tips I could give is like, try to imagine that you are going for a back flip flick. That way you normally balance the ball in, in the right way that you can actually connect the Jason flick as well. So yeah, just keep that in your mind. Keep the ball on top of your car balanced. No bounces what, whatsoever. And in the middle kind of that you can actually connect the two really fast touches. For the like maximum speed and height tips for that is that it is really difficult. Like there's no other way around it. It's really, really tough to get the perfect timing. It's, it, it is very strict. But yeah, just keep practicing the flick and eventually you will get the timing right. Just make sure that the ball is very, very steady on top of your car. That way you are more likely to connect the two really fast hits. And yeah, just keep practicing. It's, it's tougher than it seems, but at the same time, it's easier to like do mechanically than it, than it seems, I guess. Yeah, those are all my tips for that. I hope that helps at least a bit. The next up is the, I've uh, been calling it a half breezy. I know it's similar to Sir Classic Flick, but if I would name it right now, it would be Tornado Flick or Tornado Spin Flick, because for this, you're basically doing Tornado Spin around the ball and then at the end, you know, back flipping it. So what do you want to do for this is, again, you need to have an arrow left or right. For me, arrow left and then tornado spin, which means that arrow left and then the joystick to the right. So you'll keep spinning in this like tornado spin way, right? And then you need to like get around the ball with that and at the end to like flick with the backflip. At the beginning, boost. Then at the middle, take a short break with the boost and the arrow left for a very, very short amount of time. And then again, like boost and have arrow left and then do the backflip. With this motion, you should connect uh, the flick at the end and that you won't hit the ball too early. But yeah, this is all about just doing the tornado spin and trying not to hit the ball too early, just practicing the boost timing and just, yeah. I hope those tips helps to like understand how it's made. But yeah, if you manage to pull this flick off, it's very, very good. It is super difficult to defend because you go from side to side and then the ball goes like the opposite direction. It is honestly like one of the most difficult flicks, at least in my opinion, to save because it's very confusing for the defender. Now, when we have done that, I think it's very natural to move to breezy flick, right? <laughs> so it's very similar, but for breezy flick, you start the same. You start doing the tornado, but then 
very early you uh, you let go of the aero left button so your car will keep spinning like horizontally only so keep the car like kind of flat in air and keep spinning horizontally and once you have done the like 180 do the backflip for so kind of like a musty at the end right but breeze flicks they are kind of similar to the on the tornado spin flick or tornado flick whatever i was calling it earlier in a way that you again need to manage the boost in a way that you don't hit the ball too early but are still able to connect the flick at the end so you just need to keep practicing with the ball this like boost time right i hope these tips helps if not i am sure breezy has way better of a tutorial on his channel so go and check him out and then we can move on to 180 or 360 wave dash flick which is honestly way easier than people think you just need to tilt your car in a in air a bit sideways and then do the wave dash and what you want to do with that is to like dodge forward but immediately press backwards like down and have the power slide button held down the whole time so your car will like drift or slide very smoothly so tilt your car a bit sideways do the like forward dash or like kind of like front flip which you pull back downwards immediately and on the power slide button held down the whole time and with the ball you just Pop the ball up a bit and then start tilting the car and then you do the wave dash and you just manage your boost in a way that you can catch the ball either if you want to like just flick immediately like 180 flick or whatever or maybe even dribbling off the words you can do that as well but yeah with boost you can just balance the ball that it doesn't fall off and you can just do whatever you want next i'm going to talk about the freestyle mechanics and especially must clicks in air and for this, I would want you to first like know and make sure that you can do the backflip musty flick on ground with the flick, right? So for that, it's just very important that you boost backwards at the middle so you get a bit of distance between you and the ball. That's the key to do the musty flick. And another little tip I can give is to practicing delay flicks, which is just like you when you press this uh, jump button the second time, so you will flick, you will immediately cancel the flip forward so your car gets stuck in air kind of and then release the flick at the end again. So your car kind of like gets stuck in air a bit and then release the motion that you can actually flick the ball with the car. Uh, why we do this is very simple. If you're way too close to the ball, you can still manage to recover this mistake with the delay flicks. And then the other flick or other way to do the flick, especially in air that I'm going to give a tip on, is to releasing the joystick after the second jump. So when you do the actual flick, release the joystick so your car will actually manage to scoop the ball. When you're properly underneath the ball, you can actually scoop the ball very, very well, well with that. All right. I hope those little tips help for these. Let's just go into specifics and let's start with Sealy uh, Musties first because I think those are the most common and I think the easiest. So what you want to do is to go off the wall and here the first touch is very important that you knock the ball off the wall up but it needs to be like not too high so it doesn't hit the ceiling nor it can't be too low because then you can't catch the ball anymore after you land on the seat. So yeah, it's all about just having the really good touch and just practicing that little touch of the wall. And then when once you have landed on the ceiling, you just need to catch up to the ball. And for the musty flick itself or for the recovery, I would say that practice first that you go on the ceiling and then immediately afterwards you catch up to the ball and try to air dribble it. Once you have done that, then you position your car in a way that you can actually not start the air dribble but start pulling the car backwards for the backflip motion and do the master flick so this is a very very handy tip that i'm gonna give for the other ones other ones as well practice the air dribble first and then go for the air dribble but don't actually hit the touch with the nose and start doing the backflip motion for the master flick all right and then we can talk about off the sidewall master flicks i think that's natural transition i think so what you want to do is again the first touch off the wall is very important and i think a lot of people do the mistake that they knock the ball off the wall too hard so for this very simple don't boost while you hit the ball you can go as fast as you want on the wall but once you hit the ball do not boost and that should 
like 9 out of 10 give the right distance for the ball that you can still manage to catch up to it and do the musty flick. So I could give this tip again for the side wall. Side wall musty is that do that, that you knock the ball off the, off the wall without boosting, then catch up to the ball and try to start an air dribble. But again, once you have like mastered that, then when you go for the musty flick, don't actually start the air dribble. But once you are close to the ball, start doing the backflip and proceed with the musty flick, right? And remember to boost again with the flick. And if you struggle to get the proper flick, just maybe releasing the joystick again helps with this, at least for me. And I hope it does for you. All right. And then we can talk about sidewall breezes. And for this, of course, you need to learn how to do a breezy flick first. But honestly, it's very similar to the sidewall musty, but except that you just do the breeze instead of the musty. So you knock the ball again off the wall without boost. Then catch up to the ball and start doing the breezy flick immediately. Like jump off and start doing the like sideways spin or horizontal spin immediately. And then just get underneath and do the backflip. And again, if you uh, screw the flick itself, just try to release the joystick uh, while you press the jump a second time. That helps me at least. But if not, then the delay must be so our way to go as well. I think those are very easy to do with the breezes. All right, then we can talk about reset musties. We're going to talk about resets properly in a bit, but I will give this tip already for the reset musty that you need to make sure that you actually get a proper reset. Don't just hover in air and hope that you land all four wheels. Try to get some speed and momentum towards the ball and actually slap the ball with the car, right? So just go and slap it with the bottom of the car. Get some momentum, get a proper impact on the ball. That way you will every single time manage to get the reset. Trust me, that is very important. And for this as well, I would recommend you to practice first that you will do the reset first and then immediately after the reset, try to angle your car in a way that you will start an air dribble. So start practicing with reset into air dribble. And once you have mastered that, then go for the reset into musty. And once you have managed to like do the air dribbles, your car is positioned in a way that you can just start immediately doing the backflip motion for the musty flick. All right, I think that's all the possible musty flicks, right? In air, I hope at least. Then let's talk about multiple flip resets, everyone's favorite. And for these, you need to do the same I gave the tip a minute ago that you need to practice how to get the first reset very properly. You want to get a solid impact with the bottom of the car to the ball so you can get the reset every single time. And then you can learn how to chain those. There's a gazillion different ways how to do different multiple flip resets. Well, let's just start with the flip resets actually that you will flip like a forward or diagonal towards the ball. So for these, it's honestly you just kind of like pre-flipping after the reset that you will pre-flip towards the ball that you will land the wheels again on the ball. Uh, how you can like start this off is to go in free play and then go towards the ball in the middle, jump, turn your car like the upside down and then flip in a way that you will land to the ball with all wheels. I think that's at least somewhat a start and then you want to take it in air, you will go for the first reset and then you want to turn your car upside down again so that your uh, wheels are this time towards the ground and you will flip. The key is to like knowing what is the right distance, right? So with this, it's all about practicing that you, you will teach yourself the right distance. Uh, the ball can't be too close because your car won't have enough space to do that like flip. Uh, for these, like the stalling, what we're going to talk about is going to be very key. But if the ball is again like too far, then like you will do the flip and you won't land with the bottom of the car to the ball. Key how to chain two or more is to when you flip towards the ball and land, you get the impact towards the ball. You want to boost because while you boost, that will help out with the recoil so that your car won't be out of control after the reset. So just flip and remember to boost at the same time when you land the reset to the ball. But yeah, let's just talk about store resets uh, then. Store resets are, I think, the more common ones because they are easier to chain, I think. 
and there's a lot of different variations for those you can do like heli resets even with this with just like spinning horizontally but so yeah for stall resets you just need to learn how to do, how to do the stall and stalling is very simple you just need to have arrow left or right for me again arrow left in l1 or lb and then you want to do the uh, joystick to the right so arrow left joystick to the right or arrow right and joystick to the left and when when you have that and you jump in air you will get this stall and stall is a very weird mechanic it's just like a your car will flip i think in both different ways right or something and it will cancel both ways and your car is just stuck in air for a split second and this helps out that you won't drop down as much in air so you, you kind of can recover height with stalling and yeah, obviously we are taking advantage of this and we do the first reset and then we boost a bit forward, catch up the ball again and then we do the stall really, really quick and we just hit the bottom of the car again with the ball. It's very, very, very simple. Honestly, I think the only problem with this can be either stalling that you can't do that uh, like consistently and for, the, for that you need to have your controller dead zone higher. Because that way you are more likely to get the perfect sideways movement. So your your joystick to the right, for example, in my case, will be actually like to the right. Nothing in be in between. Because if you do anything in between, you will actually get like a backflip or like a side side flip or whatever. So you want to get like very precise movement, and for that you just need to buff the controller dead zone, which is why a lot of freestylers have that high. So that they are able to do them like stalls whenever they want and it's so that it's always consistent and uh, another tip i can give for these stall resets is that you need to like catch up the ball way further than you expect so once you have got the first reset you need to boost way further than you expect so keep boosting that you're actually properly underneath the ball before you do the stall all right then we can talk about something fun in between or oh, what what how are the other ones not fun? <laughs> uh, something very gimmicky and something that you're most likely not be able to do in game, but it's the two wheeling. I get this question every single time when I stream that how do how does he do the two wheel? But two wheeling is honestly very very simple. So what you want to do is to just land the car like this. You can do it off the like diagonal front flip that you will like keep boosting that you will land kind of sideways. And then once you have landed your car in this way you just keep boosting and that's it you can also tap up so your car will turn a bit more and you can release the boost for you to like steer steer better once you have that like going on but yeah once you have it you can just do it forever it's very very easy to do you can do it off the jade flick or whatever as well it's even easier only thing is that flat cars like breakout and i believe batmobile i can't remember now but they are way harder to do this but if you're playing like Dominus, Octane, or Skyline, or you know Hybrid Hitbox, it's very easy to do. You shouldn't have any problems with it. So just land like that, and you can control it very easily with releasing the boost and tapping up. And yeah, you can just do that off the J's of flick and try to like get actual shot afterwards. It's very very difficult to do. All right, then let's talk about all the different pogos. So you can do the side wall pogo or side wall bounce, whatever people are calling it, the wall bounce. Uh, and for that, it's just that you will jump and tilt your car a bit forward and you should like hit with the edge of the car and your car will bounce up. If you don't like bounce properly up, you just need to tilt your car more. And yeah, you can just do that in all different ways. You can do it off the ground as well. But for that, you need to hit more with the corner of the car and not just solid forward of the car. So you need to like angle your car in a way that it hits the front corner. Now you might ask why don't people do that with the rear end of the car? Yeah, you can also do that, but if you're going for solo shots that you go with the ball, uh, you want to do the like front first way because then you have honestly so many different options. You have the like pogo behind the ball. If they contest the ball, you can do plan B. That's why it's 
pogo as plan B. So you're going for the pogo and you see the opponent like challenging the ball. So you can just get closer to the ball where it actually bounces and you can like bounce off the ground and hit the rear end of the car and pop it up. But yeah, if you were to do this uh, with the rear end, you would be stuck in air. But this way you can actually manage with the boost like when you want to and what you want to do, basically. And then, of course, you can do like ground pinches as well if you want. That's also a very, very solid option. And for little plan B tip I would give is to just look at the white circle on the ground and just try to land there with the pogo. And again, plan B is quite difficult. I know a lot of freestylers make it look very easy, but it is very difficult to do because the timing needs to be pretty much perfect that you will get proper height. But yeah, just need to practice the right timing that you will bounce just before the ball is like hitting the ground or you. So you we will get the maximum height. All right, then lastly, let's talk about pinches. But before we go into any specific ones, I want to give the in general thoughts about pinches. So everyone understands like that pinches is all about timing and the angle. With team pinches, that is very easy to do. Like the other one is dribbling the ball right behind the ball all the time. And then the other one gets closer and you hit the ball at the same time. So the timing is very easy. Then you just need to angle your cars in a way that the ball is in the middle or the goal is in the middle and you will launch the ball towards the goal. But if you are, for example, on the wall, then it gets way more complex. The timing is easy to do because it's on the wall the whole time. But then you need to angle your car in a very specific way that you can get the ball to go towards the goal. So yeah, let's start with the Cook's Pinches. That is like pretty much the easiest and I think the most common. I think even bots can do that nowadays. <laughs> But yeah, don't get upset if you can't do it yet. Honestly, bots are kind of cracked. I discovered this way to do the cook's pinch many years ago, actually. Uh, I made a video about it back in the day. But you can do the normal cooks. Uh, but for me, this is way more consistent and easier to understand. So on the right side, you jump, turn your car to the right and hit the right side of the ball with the bottom front corner of the car. Like on the right side of the ball in the middle. And you should... Pretty much every single time get the goal if you just do it properly. Yeah, the timing for this is very easy to understand because uh, the ball is on the wall the whole time. But you just need to hit the ball after the curve, like on the Rocket League signs or above before you hit the ball. And yeah, on the left side, it's the opposite. So on the left, arrow left, hit the left side of the ball with the bottom front corner again. And yeah. You should get it every single time if you just do it properly. And once you have done Cook's Pinches, it's very natural to move on with the Astral Pinches or Corner Pinches, however the people call it. These pinches are very similar to the Cook's Pinches. You want to go to the corner and on the left side, you want to go on the left side of the boost. Or it can be even the, in the middle, but the more left you are or more towards the side, the easier it gets. So yeah, jump, turn your car to the left and hit the left side of the ball with the bottom front corner of the car again and it should get the right angle every single time if you do it properly and on the right side it's again the complete opposite just be on the right side of the boost tilt your car to the right hit the right side of the ball in the middle with the bottom front corner of the car all right and then let's talk about ground pinches and i mean these pinches got so popular nowadays but yeah for this uh, the time gets tricky because we have been doing like the wall pinches where it's all about the ball being on the wall and you angling your car in a way that you will uh, get the shot towards the goal. But with ground pinches, the timing is another like really difficult factor that uh, will be involved. So for the timing, I would want you to try to learn how to air dribble the ball towards the ground. So you need to fall with the ball, like let's say you go off the ceiling and you drop with the ball. You need to be close to the ball the whole time and ideally you would want to kind of air dribble the ball towards the ground and at the end press the jump at the same time when the ball is landing. The angle is another aspect. Uh, Pulse Fire has uh, popularized this way to do it, like angle your car kind of sideways. But honestly, you don't even need to do that, I think. Like you can just 
fall off the ceiling so you don't need to like tilt your car in any funny way and you just need to focus on the timing so keep dropping with the ball at the same time and for me i like to look at the white circle while the ball is about to bounce and while it's like getting full the circle right so that means the ball is right now hitting the ground then you want to press the jump and just forward flick just dodge forward press the jump at the same time when the ball is uh, bouncing and you should get the right timing if you struggle with the height of the shot you need to be more vertical towards the ball so be more in the middle of the ball and go like straight towards the ground like front first towards the ground and you should get the height better and then lastly, let's talk about ceiling pinches. Uh, for this, honestly, for me, this is like the simplest or like simpler than ground pinches. But I get this way, way less frequently. I don't know why, but all right. So you want to dribble the ball, get supersonic before the ramp, then launch the ball off the ramp, catch up to the ball and try to air dribble it towards the ceiling and then just press jump when it's about to hit the ceiling at the same time. For some tips, I would recommend you to not turn your car again. So just if you go kind of diagonally off the wall, you just need to like press jump and then tilt your car a bit backwards. So you will like get the air dribble towards the ball better because you go off the ramp. For the timing, a little tip I would say is to uh, dodging a bit earlier than you think. At least for me, I struggle with the timing, but if you, if I think that I need to dodge earlier than I'm expecting the ball to hit, that will work out for me better. I don't, I'm not sure if that's only me and I'm struggling with the timing, but that's a little tip that works out for me. And with that, I think we have covered all the mechanics that I wanted to talk about today. And I really, really hope that this was helpful. This was honestly a lot of work to do, and I just... Yeah, I just hope that it's honestly helpful for you guys. I've, I've been giving these tips to other freestylers or kind of like more like comp clip hitters. And these clips have worked out for them and I hope they work for you as well. If you would want me to teach anything else, let me know in the comments. But I think these should cover all the like different variations that you would want to do. So these are like the basics i think for all the freestyling mechanics and all the different tricks that can help you get better and discover more and more about this beautiful game but yeah let me know in the comments whether if this was helpful or if you need anything else and thank you so much for watching i really really appreciate you guys thank you have a great day moi moi